Hi, my name is Jeremy Wright. I'm the VP of Services here at Nori Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to evaluate filters. Before we get into evaluating filters, there's some vocabulary that I need to go over and you're going to have to understand to be able to evaluate those filters. Okay, the first thing is going to be pore size. Now pore size, pretty simple, is the actual size of the opening in that membrane or in that surface area of that filter. The next thing we're talking about is porosity. It's basically how many pores do you have per surface area. Okay, another way to think about this is the amount of open space versus the filter media itself. The next thing we need to talk about is flow rate. Now flow rate, another one of those that's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically the amount of fluid that we want to pass through that filter at a specified pressure differential. Now the way it's going to be reported to you is basically as gallons per minute at a certain PSI. Okay. Next one is going to be pressure drop, pressure differential, or delta P. Now all three of these things, they mean the exact same, same thing. And what they are is basically we're going to take a pressure reading on the inlet side of the filter, we're going to take one on the outlet side of the filter, and then we're going to see what the difference is. And that is basically our pressure drop, differential pressure, or delta P. Different people use different terminology, but they all mean the same thing. The last thing that I need you to understand is the difference in the filter types. The two main filter types are going to be membrane and depth filters. Now in a membrane filter, we literally have a filter face and we're going to capture those particles on that filter face, okay, or on that membrane. Uh, on a depth filter, I want you to imagine a bunch of overlaying fibers where we're actually going to make it a pretty torturous path for that oil to flow through and hopefully it's going to catch those particles. Okay, so that's the difference between membrane and depth. Now in terms of oil uh, filtration, most of the time we're looking at depth filtration. A lot of the times when we're talking about membrane filtration, you're looking at uh, very, very fine filtration. We usually use this in, in water treatment is one of the most popular areas to use membrane filtration. All right, so now we've got some vocabulary out of the way. Let's talk about the actual rating systems. The first one, probably the most popular you're gonna see is nominal rating. Now, when you see a nominal rating, most of the time you're only going to see a size. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions and one where people go the most wrong is going to be just portraying the size and not the efficiency. There's actually two parts to this equation. It's size and it's efficiency at that size. I can't tell you how many times I've been teaching a public course and someone will come up to me and ask me, uh, so which is better, this five micron filtration or this five micron filtration or are they the exact same? Well, when you come up to me and tell me five micron filtration, that means nothing to me if you don't quantify it with an efficiency. How good is it at that five micron? Does it stop everything at five microns and above or does it let 35% of it go through at that size? So if you're gonna do nominal ratings, you have to have those two key components. You have to have a size and you have to have an efficiency. Let me give you another example of where this becomes a problem, especially in marketing of filters. You've got two filters here, each in their box brand new. On the outside of the boxes, they both say that they are five micron filters. If you were to study them a little bit more in depth, maybe put them in a test stand that I'm gonna to describe to you in a little bit, you'll see something completely different. Let's say this one's a five micron filter with a 99% capture efficiency rate. This one is a five micron filter with a 25% capture efficiency rate. Each of them says five microns on the outside of the box, but there is a huge difference between these two filters. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. Make sure if you're doing nominal ratings that you are getting both a size and an efficiency. The next rating system that you're going to see used, not as popular, but you'll still see it, is called a mean rating. And what a mean rating is, is basically they take uh, the average pore, the average pore size, and that's what the mean rating is. Now there's larger ones and there's smaller ones, uh, but what you're looking at with a mean rating is the average of all those small ones and large ones. Still can give you a pretty good idea of how well that filter is going to work. The next one that you're going to see, and you typically see this a lot with membrane filtration, is an absolute rating. Now what an absolute rating means is that if I give you a, a filter and I tell you that it's a 10 micron absolute, that means anything larger than 10 microns, it is going to be able to stop. It's going to stop the 11s, 12s, 13s on up. It may or may not stop a 9 or 8, a 7 and so on, smaller and smaller. It, it has the potential to stop them but there is a chance that it could let it through. Another way to think of absolute is basically the absolute rating is the size of the largest pore. So if you could fit a particle through that largest pore 
and that would give you your, your absolute rating. The next rating system is what you should be looking for. If you're buying filters, this is what you should be looking for. It is a beta rating or a multi-passed test. Now this is actually an ISO standard. It's ISO 16889. If you want to look it up, 16889. Okay, what this test is, is basically it is, again, back to this nominal thing, it is a size and efficiency. And it is a standardized test to figure that out. So what they're gonna do is take a test dust of a known particle size and distribution, and they're gonna put it in a fluid. And then we're gonna circulate that fluid and pass it through our filter that we wanna test. We're gonna put a particle counter on the inlet side, we're gonna put a particle counter on the outlet side, and we're gonna start passing that fluid through. We're gonna count how many particles are going in, we're gonna count how many are coming out at a certain size. Okay, now the way you see a beta ratio reported to you is going to be in the form of beta x equals y. The X in that equation is going to be the size of particle that we're talking about, the size of particle and larger. The Y is its efficiency at removing that size X and larger particle. Okay, so if I have 100 particles coming in and I have one coming out, you can write that as beta X equals 100. If there's 200 coming in and one coming out, that's beta X equals 200. Now X again is the size, okay? So the size that we're actually measuring. So if you wanna compare two filters, you wanna compare apples to apples, get the beta ratio of those filters and make sure the X is the same and then compare the Y's and you'll be, it'll be able to tell you which one is more efficient at removing that size of particle. There's an inherent problem with this. Now everybody wants to have cleaner fluid, less dirt in the fluid. One of the ways to do that, buy better filters. Now, when you start buying better filters, one of the ways to get better filtration is to make those pore sizes smaller. The smaller you make the pore size, the smaller the particle it can take out, the cleaner your fluid's gonna be. But if you do that, if you buy a better filter with a smaller pore, there's a couple other things that we need to take into consideration. The first is you're gonna have to either increase the surface area you're going to have to increase the porosity, the amount of pores there are per that surface area. You're gonna to have to decrease the viscosity of the fluid or slow down the flow rate. If you don't do one or a combination of those things, what's gonna happen is you try to push that fluid through that much better filter with much smaller pores and it's gonna raise the delta P. It's gonna raise that pressure differential to the point where it could potentially crack open the, the valve and you're not gonna be filtering anything. The bypass valve is gonna be open, it's gonna be completely bypassing that filter, and you're wasting your time. I hope this short segment was beneficial to you. If you would like to learn more about evaluating filters or building a world-class contamination control program, you can do so of one of Noria's many training courses. Please visit noria.com for details. Thanks for watching.